the motocross world championship heroic riding on vast areas of rugged terrain attracting spectators in their tens of thousands a spectacle of jumps counter steering and wheelies amid clouds of dust The first Japanese manufacturer to compete in the Motocross World Championship was Suzuki. Just like Suzuki's achievements in road racing, success in motocross is a big part of the Suzuki story. In 1965, Suzuki was the first Japanese manufacturer to compete in the Motocross World Championship. The company was already a big success in road racing. It had shown the world its technical excellence and achieved results. Now Suzuki wanted a new challenge. The answer was a sport with a big following in Europe, motocross. Suzuki decided to take part in two Grand Prix in Sweden and Finland to assess the situation. The rider was Kazuo Kubo. He was a member of a team that was said to be the best in Japan. With him went Seiichi Suzuki, who'd ridden in the Isle of Man TT. The machine was the newly developed RH65. This was the first motocross bike from Suzuki. But the results were disastrous. <laughs> The bike vibrated so badly it was unrideable. The engine and chassis were not up to the demands of motocross. Suzuki had only raced as a preliminary trial, but the results were an undeniable embarrassment. Suzuki's engine technologies and chassis designs had beaten the world in road racing, but they were totally unsuited to motocross. Suspension with this defeat, Suzuki gained new challenges to tackle and the beginnings of a great future in motocross. Suzuki began pushing towards the top, just as it had in road racing. Suzuki competed in the Motocross World Championship again in 1966 and 1967. But problems the engineers had never imagined meant the team struggled to even finish the races. Reaching a world-class level remained a distant goal. Suzuki's development engineers were focusing on road racing. They were too busy for motocross. Wow, 
これもトラブルだらけでしたねダウンチューブがクラックが起こるなんかいうことはしばしばでしたねモトクロスってものに対してはまるっきり分かってなかったよね At the end of 1967, Suzuki pulled out of road racing because of changes in regulations. It decided to focus on motocross. Suzuki had to develop a new machine that could win races in Europe. So it signed one of the best riders in the world, Ole Pettersson from Sweden. And it reflected his advice in every aspect of development. So this is it. Roku Hatch was a very good thing. 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 The key for the engine to win in motocross was not the peak power, but a wider torque range. With the chassis, the most important requirements were strength and lightness. Gosei no takai no motome masu desu yo road racer no kuruma te no ga. Dakedo motocross sa wa flexible ja naka ya ii kanji yo na koto o chakuchi shita ato no ante sei ga dou ka to yu koto to sono dojou no ni yotte sono taiya no grip Suzuki adopted original motocross designs for the frame and for parts such as the handlebars and muffler to create an ideal machine. Sigamri gomu bushi o iretari. Front fender wa itsumo michi o minakya ikanda mon de. Dekiru dake ko mai o sagete kure to ka. Peterson had a great talent for development. He met Suzuki's demands. And the new RH68 was born, with a look that was stylish and practical. A light, strong chassis and a torqueier engine made this a machine that could really compete in the Motocross World Championship. Suzuki engineers had reached the top in road racing. Once they chose a clear direction, they were quick to make progress. They created a genuine motocross bike in what seemed like an instant. Suzuki had high hopes for 1968. It created a full-scale setup with the mechanic going to races. From the very first race, Peterson and the RH-68 showed outstanding performance that was unprecedented for Suzuki. But there was still room for improvement. Maneuverability was great, but there was not enough power in the low-engine RPM range. Suzuki launched a new engine at the next race, the Belgian Grand Prix. Suzuki took overall second place for the first time and showed rivals it was now ready to compete on equal terms. Peterson came seventh in the year's rider standings in the 250cc class. The following year, a new, improved RH-69 produced 32 horsepower.
Pettersson steadily gained points from the third race onwards. The results were third place in the standings for riders and second in the standings for constructors. The machine had delivered top-class performance and Suzuki was now a top-class competitor in motocross. Then came the off-season. Suzuki was happy with the machine's performance. Now it took another big step forward. It signed two motocross superheroes from Belgium, Joël Robert and Sylvain Gebos. This film was shot when three riders came to Japan and tested bikes before the 1970 season. Also appearing is Mitsuo Ito, who conquered the Isle of Man TT in 1963. Clearly, Suzuki had high expectations for the new season. And the expertise of Joel Robert, Sylvain Gebos and Ole Pettersson had brought amazing improvements to Suzuki's machine. The RH70 produced a maximum of 30 horsepower, not so different from the RH69. But it gave better low and mid-range engine performance and, most importantly, better pickup at low revs. Suzuki engineers had reduced the bike's weight to just 83 kilograms. And the RH70 was the first bike in the brilliant Suzuki Yellow that came to be known around the world as Yellow Magic. The 1970s were a golden era for Suzuki. In the first race, in front of thousands of spectators, Robert and the RH70 easily won both heats without allowing anyone to catch up. The speed of the RH70 amazed the European fans. <laughs> These two star riders kept on achieving great success and competing with each other. They secured the 250cc class constructors title in the middle of the season at the 8th Grand Prix in the United Kingdom. Robert won the battle between the Suzuki riders and won the riders championship. Robert was now celebrating his third consecutive title and Suzuki had achieved its long cherished goal of victory after six years of participation. The journey since 1965 had never been easy. Suzuki's success reflected a great deal of know-how from road racing. The keys included the way Suzuki determined the character of the engine by means of the cylinder port timing and exhaust chamber. And they included weight reductions by means of materials and processing techniques. The winning machine, the RH70, was exceptional, even among strong competitors. The 
、ライダーとの関係なんかはずっと近いですね、ロードに比べてね、それで非常にフレンドリーなところがあって、私はロードも面白かったですけど、モトクロスの方がより面白かったですね。In 1971, Suzuki decided to compete in two classes. It would no longer race only in the 250cc class, but also in the 500. For the rider, Suzuki signed Roger da Costa. He was the biggest rival of Robert and Gibos, and the best rider at CZ. Suzuki now had the best riders for both classes. Also this year, Japanese rider Taichi Yoshimura raced in the 250cc class and achieved great results. Suzuki's prowess in development also enabled brilliant performance in the 500cc class. Da Costa won the first race, the Italian Grand Prix. The machine was the RN71 with a 367 cc engine and maximum output of 41 horsepower. Suzuki showed great performance throughout the season, also winning the final race, the Dutch Grand Prix. Da Costa brought Suzuki the 500cc class constructors title in the company's first year of participation. And he won his first rider's title. Da Costa was a great achievement for the race. I was able to use my own power and use my own power. Meanwhile, the naturally talented Robert and Gibos shone in the 250cc class. Robert easily won both titles. Gibos ranked third. The class belonged to Suzuki. The company now dominated both classes. It followed Husqvarna and CZ as the third manufacturer to achieve this record. Yeah, まあ、その方が車が良くなることね。彼らの話を直接聞いて、次の年はどういう車が必要かと、それを探っているわけです。In 1972, Suzuki was at peak performance. Robert won the 250cc class for the third year in a row. Da Costa had his second consecutive win in the 500. With this golden duo, Suzuki enjoyed victory in two classes for two consecutive years. All over the world, Suzuki became synonymous with motocross. Gibos and Da Costa were different. Robert was good at any time. That's a great thing. The rider who looked at the rider was the most important part of the rider. プロ野球の選手を見るのとかそういうのと同じ人気があるんですよね。In 1973, Suzuki faced headwinds. A new regulation set a minimum weight as Suzuki had been winning so much. Bikes in the 250cc class had to weigh at least 88 kilograms. This meant the RH73 had to carry 9 kilos of ballast.
モトクロスさんの性能自体はガコンとダウンしちゃうんですね Suzuki had lost momentum Now it lost the 250cc title In the 500cc class, the RN73 also had to be made heavier. Da Costa had been victorious three years in a row, but now began to struggle. He held on to the individual title, but Suzuki lost the constructor's title. Nineteen seventy-three was the year Suzuki began to slow down. Nineteen seventy-four brought a change of generations in the two hundred and fifty cc class. Robert and Gibos gave way to younger riders. Gaston Reyes steadily gained points and came fifth in the annual standings. In the 500cc class, Da Costa lost the championship and Suzuki did not win any titles. In the Motocross World Championship, 1975 was the beginning of a new era. The 125cc class was upgraded to the World Championship and Suzuki took part. The promising newcomer Gaston Raye achieved a crushing victory. He won 14 of the 24 heats and won the championship. もう早いっていうよりもやっぱりテクニックがねあの素晴らしかったです非常にもうこう的確にミスがなく走ってくる滑る構図でも砂の中でも,も素晴らしかったです The machine was the RA75 Lay down rear suspension made it much more competitive No one knew that Suzuki was destined for 10 consecutive years of victory in the 125cc class. Also this year, a Japanese star was born. His name was Akira Watanabe. He was named best rider in the Japanese domestic championship in 1974 and got a chance to race in Europe. He won his first motocross world championship and ranked fourth at the end of the season. He had taken a big step toward winning the championship. MFJ the champion was in the world championship in the world championship. でそこでそのベルギーのアマチュアの一番上のクラスで出て、いきなりツイヒートとも優勝ですよ。あの走りはガストンですね。だからそれに渡辺君が習ったっていうような感じでしたね。走りは渡辺君はよく似てました。Meanwhile, in the 500cc class, Suzuki worked intensely on development in hopes of avenging its defeat the previous year. The company evolved a range of parts to improve the machine. スズキのレーサーの整備室っていうのはでもすごかったですよなんか不具合があると、まあ、もうライダーの要請がありますよねもう徹夜してそれがずっと2週間続いたダカスタ won seven races including three in a row he won the individual title for the fourth time and the constructors title In 1976, Suzuki's rider duo was Da Costa and Walsink, who was in his third year with the company. They delivered incomparable performance and kept the competition far behind. Da Costa won the championship for the fifth time and the second time in a row. Suzuki won its fourth constructor's title. Da Costa earned the nicknames the God of Motocross and Mr. Motocross.
In the 125cc class, Gaston Rey won the championship for the second year in a row. Victory in two classes convinced observers that Suzuki was back to full strength. In 1977, Akira Watanabe came back to the Motocross World Championship after having to compete in Japan the year before. Ito Mizo さんがまあまあ話聞いてくれて、俺はもう GP 期待ですよつって、ああじゃあちょっと待てよつって、じゃあ専務にあの聞いてみようと。鈴木ね、小山会長は当時専務だったんですから。で専務室に連れてってくれてで直接話聞いてくれたんですよ。Watanabe got what he wanted. He rode well in the first race. Then in the second race, the Italian Grand Prix, he moved past Gaston Rae into the leading position. だもうガストン当時のガストンはその時も七十五年七十六年って二回チャンピオン取ってますからね二連続。だもうガストンともうこういうガチンコですよ。But in the third race, the Belgian Grand Prix, Watanabe crashed during a big jump. He suffered a serious knee injury and had to give up the season. Watanabe immediately went into hospital and had surgery in Belgium. Some people said he'd never race again. But he was determined to get back in the saddle. もうね、髪も仏もないと思ったね。なんでこんな目に遭わなきゃなんないのか。Meanwhile, Rae had a great season. He scored seven wins and the championship. Suzuki won the constructors' title for the third year in a row. In 1978, Watanabe competed in the World Motocross Championship for the third time. He had more than just speed. He had learned the tactics and cool-headedness that were vital for a champion. Ah, it changed. Ah, that was the injury. Ah, the injury. Ah, that was 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 the injury. This season he showed clever riding and earned a place on the podium in most races. Then in the final Grand Prix, he secured his place as the first Japanese to win the World Motocross Championship. Yeah, 嬉しかったですね。いやまあチャンピオン取った時はね、本当にね、地球は私を中心に回ってんじゃないかなって。まあそういう気分にもなるよね。あの世界一っていうのは。Suzuki won 14 of the 24 heats, and it won the constructors' title for the fourth year in a row. Ah, Kure is about 78, I think. The car is a car that 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 is a car. 夜だけだよ楽しいあの嬉しいのはゴールして瞬間ともう次おき次の日起きたらもうまた次のレースに向けてですからね。But the rivalry between Watanabe and Rae had become fierce。プロですからねあの渡辺の方が早いんだみたいなことはなかなか言わないでしょ。あの頃はそういう時代じゃなかったんでね。とにかく勝ってくれればいいと思って壊れずに最後までは走り切って。A team only needs one champion. So the next year, 1979, Rae left Suzuki. In his place came Harry Everts. The combination of Everts and Watanabe was also invincible. They showed overwhelming speed. 
and won 21 heats out of 24. やっぱりジャンプ取ったから絶景一番で走りたいっていうので、79年も出たんですよね。で、それは実際もう右の膝もあのの人体も内側が切れてたんですよね。The RA79 was the first Suzuki motocross machine with a water-cooled engine. It delivered consistent performance and suited both riders. Newly evolved lay-down suspension gave 310 millimeters of wheel travel. That's on a par with today's specifications. Everts won nine Grand Prix and won the championship. Watanabe came second. Suzuki won the constructors' title for the fifth year in a row. The RA79 became the forerunner in the era of water-cooled engines. あ、良かったですね。全然熱だれもなくて、でも渡辺明。彼に合わせるとね、最高だよっていうようなこと言って。それまでは文句ばっかり言ってましたけどね。まあでもそういうことを我々打ち上げてくれるから開発がどんどん
フレームが邪魔だったもんですからちょっとフレームを左右非対称みたいなフレームにして改善改善で来てる時っていうのは割とスムーズにつながってくるんですけどポンと変化点が発生した時にはすごくいろいろ難しいところが発生しましてこれを乗りこなしちゃう人が出てくるわけですよ。ジョ,ジョベとかあのエリック・ゲボスとかああいう若い連中ですよ私の後のあのハリーと俺がね必死になって走ってるのにさエリックはまだ1 5 6歳でさパッと来て「オンガー!」っつってもうトップ走っちゃうわけですから In 1981 Watanabe recovered from his injury The Suzuki rider lineup became Watanabe, Everts and Eric Gebos Young riders had steadily improved and performed well It became a close contest. ハリー・エバーツと私とエリック・ゲボスの 3, 3人体制だったんで,でそこにリナルディとイタリア人あとヤマハのベルケニアスっていうヤマハのワークスこの5人がチャンピオン争いだったんですよ The victor in this close battle was エヴァーツ He won 6 heats out of 24 Eric ・ゲボス won 5 heats Watanabe was victorious in two. Suzuki won the constructors' title for the seventh year in a row. In the 250cc class, Jobe led the championship at the beginning. Then he was absent because of an injury, and Yamaha later moved ahead in the race for points. Jobe was back in the saddle with his injury for the final Grand Prix in the Netherlands, but retired. Then, Henk van Milo turned the tables on Yamaha and enabled Suzuki to win the constructors' title for the second year in a row. But in the end, I was the top. In the Australia Grand Prix, I was the top one in the Australia Grand Prix. But in the end, the weight was really bad in the 81st year. It 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 was really bad. In 1982, Yamaha and Honda improved their performance in the 125cc class. They both showed spectacular speed in the first half of the season. Suzuki began fighting back in the seventh Grand Prix. Eric Gebos and the RH82 showed extraordinary capability. Gebos secured his first world championship at the 11th Grand Prix in Sweden. Everts came fourth in the overall standings. Watanabe, with no wins, came seventh. Suzuki had now achieved eight consecutive years of victory in the 125cc class. 125はね、絶対負けないなと思ってました。三年ぐらい先のことまでちょっと頭に置いておいて、じゃあ次の年はこういうことやっていけばいいな。次はこういうことやっていけばいいな。今でも一番速いっていう車は82年の車じゃないかと思います。In addition, American rider Brad Lackey won the 500cc class. Suzuki regained the title, holding it for the first time since 1977. In 1983, Suzuki changed its lineup of riders in the 125cc class. Eric Gebos became first rider. And Michele Rinaldi from Italy joined the team. Eric Gebos began the season with four consecutive Grand Prix victories. He then came second twice and won the following six GPs in a row. He won the constructors' title in the 10th Grand Prix with incredible speed. Gibos himself became champion for the second year running. Rinaldi took second place. Suzuki had now won the 125cc class in each of the nine years since it was established. Meanwhile, in 250ccs, Jobe won nine GPs and claimed the championship for the second time. He brought fresh excitement to a class where Suzuki had a strong tradition. But Suzuki announced it would not take part in the World Motocross Championship the following year. Rinaldi was a two-year contract. In 1983, suddenly Suzuki retired from the race. So, Rinaldi was a 
これは困ったなと思ってリナルディはもう一年あるもんですから約束した契約金を払うとだけどもあんたは好きなメーカーへ行って出てくれと言ったら私は今の車さえ使わせてくれれば契約金も何にもいらないでスポンサーを見つけてやりますからっていうもんですから。In 1984, Rinaldi took part as a privateer, but crashed before the season started. He missed the first races, then made a strong comeback. In the final race, he scored an astonishing victory and took the championship. Suzuki had now set a remarkable record 10 consecutive years of victory in this class. In 1968, Suzuki had pulled out of road racing. And looking for new challenges, it had become the first Japanese manufacturer to take part in the World Motocross Championship. In the early 1970s, Suzuki made motocross history with superstars like Robert and Tacosta and showed the world that it was enjoying a golden era. この一番くっきりとあの残っている部分でしてだからやっぱりチーム力あーその中で一員としてやれたことがああよかったなぁとは思いますね勝って初めて鈴木の名前がヨーロッパにもアメリカにも広がるでしょうしチャンピオン取るこうストーリーの中にはやっぱり恵まれたあの人との巡り合いもありますよねレーサーを作るセンスがすごい良かったですよね世界 GP をみんな経験してる人ですからねもう目は超えてますから自分が考えたことそのまま整形できますしこんな楽しい職場はなかったんじゃないでしょうか Suzuki is synonymous with motocross victory Behind that success are all the engineers and legendary riders who've been part of the team It's thanks to their efforts and a constant pursuit of new challenges that Suzuki is the company it is today. <laughs> Interview with Joel Robert, first world champion for Suzuki in 1970. And you say, at the end of the season, uh, I think we invited to have a meeting together. But that, no, that was in July, a little meeting. He told me that Silva has signed with it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and finally I signed in November, end of November. When did you ride the Suzuki factory bike R870 at first. In Mont Fuji. Mont Fuji. Was a, a cry in the sand, there was a lot of sand. Yes, and I Bombay. think we were together. Bombay. And, yeah, we did the we first test, together. we went together. Huh? And we were crying, yeah, the bike was shit. <laughs> Completely shit. Everything was broken. The shock absorber in the back, the front fork bend. Exhaust pipe explodes. But the bike was very, 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 uh, very light, yeah. And uh, the handling was good, very good. And after a lot of training, we never, never get tired, you know. Mm -hmm. When we received the bike in March, I think, the bike was better then. Yes. Uh, from fork, uh, shock absorber, good. And, but the, the handling was fantastic. Or every time the same, I get the same time every lap. Yes. 
Yeah, that, that was a good thing. It's the difference between CZ and Suzuki. Suzuki, you ask something, the afternoon or the next day you got it. CZ, when I had something, six months later we got it. There was completely different. And yeah. I, it, that was good, we, we enjoyed them. Yes, we, I remember when we were testing in, in Japan, in, in uh, Fuji or around uh, Amamatsu, that when we brought up the, the, at the meeting, at the evening, uh, we brought up some, we wanted some changes, and the next morning, we yeah, had yeah. such a big eyes. 70 when we went there, yeah. Yeah. we nearly, nearly uh, cry.